episode five. Starting off on an absolute unreal venue, Ashmead Fishery in Somerset. Fishing at Ashmead, one iconic place with some of your mates. Got it. This one is just about behaving, so we'll get him slipped back because the other one is the one I want to show you. Hello, big boy. I would say that this trip was an absolute success. Look at this common carp, black as your hat, wicked fish, massive fins, and uh, I would say trip completed. Well done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I went straight down my throat. <laughs>
Right then, so you've just seen me move my two rods into the swim next door. The original swim is just there. I've decided to up sticks from two of them and I've put them just into this swim here where I've seen two carp ghosting around the same sort of spot now. So I hadn't really seen much over in my zone today. I did sort of reel in about half one, two o'clock, go for a squander with my friends, etc., etc. But when I returned, I saw those carps. I just had to put some rods there. So I've put two rods there. I've left one in the original swim um, on the same spot I had it on last night. So all we've got to do now is just sit here, relax, chill out, we're on holiday and see what happens, yeah? Hey, cheers mate. Well cheers boy. Yes. Oh, okay. Nice mate, thank yeah, you. Yeah. That's happy days, that. Nice mate, well done. Yeah. Oh, nice grey one, isn't it? Yeah, lovely. Ready. Yeah, it's one he wanted, wasn't it? Well done, Alex, for kicking our week off on Ashmead with an absolute banger. An old, old fish, one called the Grey, and we were literally looking at pictures of that fish in Mickey Gray's book, literally uh, yesterday afternoon, admiring that one and some of the other real old cool ones that reside in Ashmead. So, well done, mate. Well deserved. Hopefully, myself and some of the other guys can get amongst some fish as well. We've got three nights left. We're currently Sunday at half past three and I've just got my rods out after going to the shop and then going and see the grey with Alex. So they're now gonna be fishing until I either catch a fish or reel them in tomorrow afternoon because I think bite time, to be fair on here, is late morning, I reckon. So it's getting quite warm now, which is a good thing for here because of all the weed so hopefully i can catch one one of the other guys surely will catch one so we can show you some more of these ashmi carp Right, this place, this place is a nut buster, I tell you. The weed 
the lack of bites, <laughs> the lack of shows. Um, it really doesn't fill you with a lot of confidence, but I've redone the rods, I'm really happy, and I've seen a carp over one of the rods. And I even saw a bit of bubbling, so that's where I have my rod, and that's where I saw some fish. So, yeah, hopefully that will go. That's the aim of the game, you swap hands. Whew. Oh, I've got a new camera, by the way. Oh, A7 IV. So, this vlog episode five should be all in 4K. I hope you love the silky smooth sharpness of this video with the new camera. Say thanks. Thank you. Um, all I need to do now is show you a big fat common, probably the long common. Yeah, that'll do. I tell you what, I'll put a picture of the long common up now. What a banger. I want that one. So all wish me luck, yeah? All cross your fingers, your toes, every limb. Hopefully I can catch you the long common, yeah? He's got a little gammy foot. Poor little man. You eat your Pacific tuna, mate. You feel better. So with these social trips away, it's not always about the fishing, especially when you come to these places like Ashmead, where bites are very few and far between. They're really hard, and generally through the daytimes, early mornings, you are fishing on your own. So we do make an effort to reel in and go and hang out by the huts, by the lodges, generally just drinking, getting some meat on the barbecue and have a good catch up. First Ashmead carp, sat here for four nights, contemplating move many a time, seeing them other places, but they were slowly coming into the area. Just stuck with it. And 22 and a half pound mirror. But one more night, so hopefully some of the other boys can get amongst some fish as well. It's been a struggle, but it's been a crack. Fishing at Ashmead, one iconic place, with some of your mates, and end up with a carp. I can't really ask for any more than that. So happy, cheers boys. That would be lovely. Got some pictures, Harry? Yeah, I've got loads. Sweet. Happy. Yep. Do you want to have a quick look? No, if you're thinking they're good, that's fine. Wow, it's a beautiful morning here in Norfolk. There's mist on the water, the sun is rising on the horizon, and I have got a cheeky work night with my mate Lewis down at the Norfolk Syndicate. What a night, had two bites early hours in the morning. This low 20 common, definitely a male fish, beat me up crazy. But in the retainer just over there, I've got one of the late gems. I don't know if you remember, but me and Lewis have fished here in episode one 
whoa, episode one, we were over on island side and I talked about these old Norfolk fish, some of the original fish that live in here, loads of little pin scales all over its flank and I've got one of those. I've got the biggest of the two remaining pin scales, it's got a big old pop eye, big old fins, proper character and one of the lakes proper old school gem. So this one is just about behaving so we'll get him slipped back because the other one is the one I want to show you. Hello, big boy. He's got a big old eye. No, one eye's bigger. That one's normal-ish. Yeah, right. The other side is double the size. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. So yeah, the microphone battery has died without me knowing it, but let's not dwell on that. Let's show you this wicked carp, 31 pounds of old Norfolk gravel pit carp. Big fins, tiny pin scales that run down both sides of the fish. They just don't make carp like this anymore. Not only that, it's got some weird boggly eyes to just add to the character as well. I'm chuffed to catch it, and I'm even more chuffed to show you some of the wicked and wonderful strains that live in this gravel pit. Right, so it's about half seven now. The sun is fully up. I need to get home and crack on with some editing, but really, Christopher, letting the battery in the mic die, that is such a schoolboy error. That's not what you're all about, mate. You're better than that. I'm blaming Phil Spinks. I went filming him yesterday for his latest specimen series where he went eel fishing. Eel fishing as well. But anyway, so I'm blaming you, mate. I forgot to charge the battery after that. Schoolboy error, but hey ho. I still managed to catch the fish and capture a bit of the footage for you to see as well. So that's that. I'm going to go home, crack them with some editing. Next time we catch up, yeah, I'll be at Carthagena, fingers crossed, trying to catch some of those ones. See you in a bit. Yes, back down Carthagena's Brook Lake. It's 21st of August. I'm looking forward to it. Come on, let's spawn out a big one. Rods are out, the bivvy's an absolute mess, but hey, we are dangling for the night. And in my absence, this place has been fishing rather well. Loads of big ones out, but not the big one. Bull nose, well due. It's not gonna be 50 pounds like it was at the beginning of the year, but 46, 47 pounds, one of the best looking common carp in the country. And it's swimming around in here and it's well overdue. And I've got two nights to angling. Am I going to be spawny enough to catch it? Who knows? Every dog has its day. Righty ho, good morning. So first night on Brook Lake, uh, no activity, not really seen a lot in the zone. Uh, Glenn the bailiff said he saw loads here sort of yesterday morning, um, but they've done the off. They definitely moved to the other side of those reeds uh, because at two o'clock uh, I woke up with a bit of a 
savage liner sort of got out of bed had a little look and I heard lots of fish sort of showing over there in a, in a zone that's dominated by a swim called Zeros. So the plan was to move over there today. Someone's beaten me to it and they, someone's not moved but someone's turned up and it's gone in there. So yeah, that's where I would have moved. Um, getting trouble with crayfish. My hook baits are coming in absolutely ruined. Um, not great because the, the crayfish just pull around your rig, all around the spot, get it caught up in little bits of weed and debris. And not only that, they muller your hook baits, not the one. So I feel a little bit deflated, I'm not gonna lie. Um, bike time is gone now. Not really sure what to do, um, apart from I'm gonna have a reel in, probably in a couple of hours time, have a good look round. There's five of us on, there's not much of an opportunity to move. Um, the only place I fancied was Zeros where I just mentioned. Um, but I will go and have a look down the other end a little bit later, see if there's any opportunities there. Oh, yeah. Not good. I was literally just talking to the camera about how unconfident I was. Put the camera down looked out bite got out there hit it um, and it was just plodding down the edge of the reeds to be fair then it literally just went bang right obviously took a little bit of line from a really tight clutch um, and then instant hook pull um, there was just obviously too much pressure on that hook I mean you wouldn't fish like that if you're fishing out in open water um, and a lot of time you get a good hook hold and it doesn't really matter, you've got the stretch in the line, blah, 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 but on this occasion, fish lost. Got it. So rig change and bait change, as you can see, this is the rig I've gone for. It's a low line pop-up, half a cork ball and half a tiger nut just on the top and as you can see if I drop it in the margins it sits rather well just showing the top of the tiger nut perfect low line pop up I would use it on a uh, Ronnie if I could but it's just not quite buoyant enough so this rig decent rig caught loads of carp on it before so I'm happy using it uh, and the tiger nuts means hopefully I can get through the evening through the night without getting completely crayed for that bite time which is early hours of the morning up to about half nine I don't want to be waking up thinking, have I got a hook bait? Have I got any bait out on the spot? Have my rig been pulled around the whole spot? I don't need this going on in my mind. All I need to concentrate on is getting the rods out, being confident that everything is sitting right. So with the change to tiger nuts and the rigs to accommodate the tiger nuts, hopefully they'll be sitting perfect for that early morning bite time. Both rods have been deployed. They're out on the same spot. Everything went lovely jubbly. Just a handful of tigers over top, not a lot. I don't want to put too much in, I just want to get a bite. Hopefully, tomorrow morning, we'll see a repeat of a bite, but hopefully landing it. Well, as you've probably gathered by the fact that I'm stood in a rather messy garage means that that last trip you just saw ended in a blank. One lost fish, not good, but hey, that's fishing. And let me just catch you up on what's been going on because it's been probably a couple of months from then till now. I have been fishing, but I've also been really busy with work stuff, renovations at home, all that sort of guff. But let me fill you in on what's happened. So. I did go back to Carthagena probably three to four weeks after that trip you've just seen and I did catch, but only a small one, I think it's one of Jerry's stockies, 
I'd be lying if I were to say it was £10, probably £8 or £9 at best. And that's what happened on that trip, nothing else. And I returned back probably again three or four weeks after that for another trip at Carthagena. Um, fished the usual hinge stiff rigs, um, woke up to some lovely sunrises, but on that trip I had a little bit of a disaster. Uh, I lost my rear stage stand, that fell off the side of the stage and right into the drink, gone forever. Um, but worse things worse, I actually broke my stove, so I had no tea, no coffee for two nights fishing, which made me very sad. No caffeine and no carp. But not all is lost because, as you can see, I'm in my garage and I'm just about to sort out some bits and bobs for a, a local trip with my mate Lewis because we've decided to hit up a little back lake at the complex we fish here in Norfolk. It's unfished, it's got very minimal carp. I fished it once, but tell you what, I'm going to sort this out. We'll pick this up, go for a few more bits and what that lake's like when we're there, finding spots and pre-baiting, yeah? So the lake I'm talking about is at my Norfolk Syndicate, but it's a little lake at the back of the complex, which I would say was completely forgotten. It's about four acres in size, very minimal carp. No one has really fished it for the last five, six years at least. So I've enrolled my friend Lewis to come and give me a hand. We're gonna have a little marker up, see what features we can find, put some bait out and see if we can come back the next night and catch a carp. As I said, there's not many carp in here, but I did do a session back in June 2020 with my mate Philip Spinks, and I was lucky enough to catch a 25 pound common, black as your hat, big fins, and it was a real special fish. Over the moon to catch it, and I've always wanted to come back and have another go. So that is what me and Lewis are gonna do. We're gonna find some spots, as I mentioned a minute ago, get some bait out, and return tomorrow for a quick overnighter. Come fishing with Chris, has to do a pit stop for cheesy chips and a beer. Right, quick stop at pub, pint and some chips, which are now gone and they were lovely. Now we're just gonna head to the lake. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just click our fingers and wrap the lake? Whoa, the powers of editing have got us here in super quick time. Happy bloody days. Anyway, so as you know, we got here yesterday, we did some markering, we put some bait out. It's really simple fishing. We're just gonna clip up get the rods out on the spots, ready for tonight. Lou's been enlisted to help me try and catch a carp for you guys on carp chapters, even though he's more interested in the river that runs just around the back here of the lake. The River Wensum does hold some lovely chub, but he has to help me catch a carp to finish off this episode of Carp Chapters. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get the rods out now, screw some baits on, get them out, and we'll catch up in a little while when the rods are out, yeah? Easy peasy with this sort of fishing, two rods each, bingoed, all in one zone, easy. Watch out, Brian, here I come. No, mate, whatever. Looks good. Let me just get this out. Right, so I'm gonna go. So you got basically yeah, the gap, basically. The yep, fair days. I wanna go in line with that bush. Perfect. 
No, it's fine. That's about probably four foot away from each other, which is perfect because if we land spot down there, then it's covering both of us. It's fine, I'm happy with that. Good man. Mine is really, really simple. Mine is just that. Easy peasy. Done. Let's get them out. <laughs> what do you say, Lou Bear? Fishy. It, what? Carp? Tench? Tenchy, I think. Right, Lewis has got his rod back out. That can be a bit of a problem because, well, Tench, a pain in the behind. And if we get kept up all night with Tench, then that stops you from catching carp. So we have got some big old hook baits we can put on if we need to, but um, I'd rather not. So we'll see how it goes, yeah? Right, here we go. Uh, get on the bank and see where I'm standing and then I can tell you where to stand. It's literally just here, like this, out there like so. Whoa. Yeah, I'm like there. Right, I'm gonna do a wavered side wangers first, see how so it goes. Oh, that's amazing. I'm leaving that. It's right in front of that big old tree basically so what let me you come out here and then what I'll do is I'll hold my rod out while yeah yeah it's fine nice pretty damn tight yeah tench Dark old partner. Hang on. Oh, that's that's better. Anyway, um, all rods are sorted. Homes are up. Lewis is going to make a cup of tea. Where are you? You're hiding behind the big old head. There you are. Lewis is going to make a cup of tea. Um, then we're going to have some tea. And then we're going to catch a big fat carp. How about that? See you in the morning. I would say that this trip was an absolute success. Look at this common carp, black as your hat, wicked fish, massive fins, beat me up ragged when I was playing it just before first light. And we are over the moon to catch one. Any of you eagle eye viewers will notice that this is actually the fish I caught two years ago. I had it back in June 2020 at 25 odd pound. And I've just caught it again at 26.10. So, I'm over the moon. It would have been nice if Lewis caught this because I have had it, but you can't pick and choose what fish picks up any hook bait. So it is the only bite from carp we've had this trip. We've had quite a few tench, but we've just sucked them up and got on with it. But I think that goes to prove that there's not many carp in this lake. If I've done two trips in total, caught the same fish 
on both trips goes to prove that there's not that many carp in this lake. So I'm over the moon, Lewis is over the moon, and uh, I would say trip completed. So I think that's a grand way of finishing episode five of Carp Chapters. This fish is mega. Hope you enjoyed the fish and episode five. We'll catch you on the next one. Remember, hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on episode six.